Hello and welcome to the Mesa Ridge 262 RL. Coming right up to the front, we have a light just in case you need to hook up at night. You have a retract and extend for your auto uh, jack. Because this is electrical, if this ever goes out, right behind this little black tab here, if you pull this up, right behind it, there will be a manual override to raise and lower this. Coming to your propane tanks, you have this little black switch here, which whatever way it's pointing is the propane that it's taking from, along with reading. By reading, I mean that right here, the little clear part, that shows red, because uh, it's not taking any propane yet. Uh, but it will show green once you have a steady flow coming through. But once again, that little black reader, it's just pointing to whatever tank it's reading along with taking propane from. You have your storage and a little curly hose for your outside port and shower, which I'll get to over there. Also, one thing I missed is the docking lights. It's going to be right here. For your auto stabilizers, you have your extend to the left and your retract to the right. Moving over, you got your sewer system here. You have your gray tank pull on the left side, your black tank pull on the right. I do recommend doing the black tank first and then your black tank flush, which I'll get to in just a moment. And then doing the gray tank, the reason why I recommend doing this last is just because this is going to be the cleanest water out of the two. So when you do go to put your hands on it, this gives it just one last little clean wash before you go ahead and touch it with your hands. This is gonna be the back of your fridge, just in case you ever need to access it. This is called the docking station. So this is where all your water is gonna come from. So all of your water activities here. So starting up to the top left, you have your hot and cold side outside shower. Right below is going to be your black tank flush. So that black tank flush, like I said, you'd pull your black tank, make sure it's empty. Go ahead and turn this on. Put a pressurized hose right into here. Once that's on, go ahead and uh, obviously go back over. It's just going to have a steady flow of water inside the black tank which that steady flow is actually gonna be a little shower. A little sprinkler on the inside. So that sprinkler helps take down all the extra crud, toilet paper, whatever might get stuck on the walls on the way out. Just gives it one last flush before you go ahead and do your gray tank. So this is a reader. Obviously to the left, that's gonna be your tank fill, so your fresh tank. And then down is gonna be your city water. Your city water, if you go to a campground, that's what you're gonna do. Your city water is going to be your campground water. When you get there, go ahead, plug it in. This, this will push water through your system. For your fresh tank, if you need to take water with you, let's say you're going to the middle of nowhere, go ahead, flip it to the left, and start filling. And then you can look on the inside, which I'll show you. It's just a little uh, button that shows you how full it's getting. Power stabilizers for the back. Retract and extend. It's the opposite. On this side, it's just flipped have your camp power or your shore power here this is backup camera accessible so if you do pop that plate off it's just four screws you buy a backup camera go ahead and place it inside once it's inside there go ahead and take a little it'll have like a little tablet with it go ahead and plug that into your cigarette lighter once it's in your cigarette lighter go ahead and turn the running lights on and when the running lights are on it'll start feeding footage through for your rear stairs. Make sure your door is fully open. I uh, have this little uh, piece here. We'll scrape the side of your door. Lift up, make sure it doesn't hit. And on this side, it is now leaning up against this. Go ahead and just pull it. It'll sit behind here to take out. All you do is pull, grab, and lay down. Make sure this is actually flush to the metal piece here, because if it's not, this will actually rip off the furry part along with the rubber seal right behind it. It'll rip it clean off. The door, magnetic, there meets there. And now it's good. Your tires, this little green cap indicates that 
It's actually filled with nitrogen. Uh, you are you are able to fill it with regular air. It doesn't inflate or deflate with temperature change. Here's that spray port. Pull, insert the curly hose, let go, and then you're good to just use it. It'll just be regular cold water. One time outlet. And your water heater. So your water heater. You have a one in one sixteenth socket anode rod. So this anode rod is about this long. And that goes inside of your tank. So all the hard water that gets put in here through campgrounds or whatnot, this will take the beating and not your tank. So this savers your tank. So once your anode rod is in and tightened down with that one and one sixteenth socket, go ahead and turn the hot side of the faucet on. Once that hot side has a steady flow, it'll at first it'll sputter for a little bit. Just that's just all the air getting pushed out of this tank. Once it has a steady flow. Go ahead and turn the water heater on. I'll show you the switches on the inside, but I'm just telling you, just go ahead and turn it on once it has a steady flow. Because water does get stagnant, you do want to release the pressure here. You can hear it kind of hiss. And then go ahead, take this out with that socket, pull it, all the water will start to come out of here. And then go ahead and pull the, this one more time, pressure release valve, just to have this Come out faster so the reason why you do pull this first is because all the pressure is built up you don't want the anode rod to become a rocket so just go ahead and pull it it'll hiss out go ahead take this your anode rod pull it out set it up and pull this one more time and the water will start coming out fast this is your furnace exhaust so this does get very hot so if there's any little kids in the area or someone who may not know just keep them updated let them know, don't touch this. For these stairs here, just go ahead, lift up, and then same for these. Folds away that easy. Pull, pull. Now they're back open. So coming up top there with that little tab, it's kind of hard to see. But if your awning ever electrically goes out, you are able to man manually override it with that. Just pop that off, put a tool inside, and then you can move it back in. Coming on the inside of the camper, we have all your readers right here, starting off with their battery, fresh tank, black tank, and gray. And then for your water heater, you do have two elements, gas and electric. Uh, for example, let's say you're gonna take a shower and you want it super hot, go ahead and just click both at the same time. That'll give you the most heat. This is that water pump. So if you do fill up that fresh tank, go ahead, flip this. This will push that water through your system. Interior lights, on your lights. Slide in, I'm just gonna reel it in a little bit. And then reel it back out just so you know what it sounds like because it sounds scary. But just know that that's normal. Go ahead, fully extend it. And then for your awning, you have your extend and your retract. Uh, when it is fully extended, extended, you'll see a little flap hang down, just like that. And then you'll start to see the black bar that it's on. And then to pitch it for the rain, here, I'll actually extend it a little bit. I just can't fully extend it because we have this uh, other mason ridge right here. But for example, to pitch it for the rain, all you do is pull down like right here. And that'll bend right at that elbow. And then it'll start to lean on one side and then drain the rain. Come into your sound bar, hold, it'll say welcome. Then you have zone one and zone two, which is gonna be your inside speakers and your outside speakers. You can mute both just by tapping them. Or you can just click here. This is also a mute button. Then you have your lower volume and your higher volume. HDMI and USB, if, you're, if you click mode, that's gonna go through your aux, your Bluetooth, your TV, and whatnot. If you click it, it'll say goodbye. You have your USB and your HDMI port here. For your sofa here. If your couch, all you do is take those off, lift up underneath. 
there we go. You have these little, two little stands that will come out and those will act as little feet. To help stabilize. Uh, one recommendation I do have is to travel with this in the like bed position. So take this pull out, put this down on these cleats here and put this somewhere so it doesn't roll around. Just because if it is up like this and starts to travel, it'll wobble. And then that wobbling will eventually start to warp the poles on the top and bottom side. For your oven and stove, go ahead and turn that on. Press and turn, it releases the gas. I like to ignite, you can kind of see it. Well, it's hard to in camera. But you have these little white igniters on all three uh, burners to ignite. It has a little arrow, only go to the right. If it goes to the left, it'll snap off. Just go ahead and turn to the right. For the oven, press, turn to the little flame symbol. Once that, you see a tiny little flame appear in the back of the oven. Go ahead and then turn to your desired temperature. Just underneath it, we have your breakers and your fuses. Breakers are gonna be um, labeled just like a house. And these fuses, I do recommend bringing extras just in case. Probably be safe than sorry, but that's just a great recommendation if you need to. For your fridge, go ahead and tap on. Obviously five snowflakes is gonna be the coldest, one's gonna be the warmest. Then your mode, you have auto electric here. Well, age is gonna be auto, so whatever signal is, so it's looking for electric. If it doesn't find electric, it'll go to propane, and the propane symbol looks like a little water drop. But, I see A auto, it'll choose between which, whichever one it can find. Otherwise, just electric, just propane. This controls your heat, cooling, and fan. Hold to turn on. It's really hard to see. The fan speed you control with this, you can kind of see the change right there with the fan button. Otherwise, if you click, it'll go from fan to dry to cool and heat. Otherwise, uh, temperature up, temperature down, hold to turn off. Just underneath it, you have your carbon monoxide detector. So this little green light indicates that it's on. This will always run, even if you're disconnected from shore power. So what I do recommend doing is after like three or four days, if you plan on leaving this, if you're uh, planning on leaving your camper for about three to four days, I would just recommend taking the negative end off of your battery because then that will finally kill this. Because this little green light, since it's always on, that'll eventually kill your battery. For your toilet, you have a foot flush. I do is click down like that. Uh, you are going to need toilet solution along with RV grade toilet paper. That solution will help break down solids and smells and that toilet paper will help break down easier. So your tank and your uh, sewer lines don't clog. Coming into your bedroom, if you lift just underneath on the wood part, it'll raise your bed. I gotta do is pull down. And then since you're pulling down, you want to push your bed back a little bit. We do have a TV bracket location along with 110 outlet and this little input here. This little button in, uh, switches between satellite and cable TV. Looking for stations. Let's have your closet here. For your AC, when this is on, when it's open, it's just going to be a dump coming straight out here. But when you close it, it'll start pushing through all the other vents on top of the roof.